community and what's happening and trying to understand it, you almost inevitably go right back to Imam Wafidi Muhammad. I've rarely had a conversation with you about our community that you don't go, not just here, I mean, you, you kind of go to this place, and I know that has a lot to do with the time you spent with him, some of the stories that you shared with me. And, and I think Imam Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on him, you talk about the values of khidma and service. This was a leader who was utterly, absolutely, just in complete service to his community and to humanity. When you understand the life of Imam Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, he precipitates the largest mass migration to Islam in America and perhaps in the West, right? And it is Imam Muhammad's up into his dying day, um, and I was very blessed to be with him three days before he passed. You know, I was in his house, which at one point he could have lived in a mansion. He could have lived in, you know, I was up into uh, a home, a very, very humble home that barely had enough room for three of us to sit and have a meeting. Um, and it was because that place for us to have a meeting was right by the door, we were interrupted uh, maybe five, seven times during the course of that meeting by little knocks on the door. And it was, it was children in the neighborhood who were coming to his house. Um, and he would get up and say, you know, he would excuse, he would really be prof just profusely apologetic to me, excuse himself, get up and go get fruit and candy and give them to the kids. At one point, literally an elderly woman came in and interrupted again and, uh, and he, kept asking her about her health and everything. And, and um, he said, the bag, bag of, the, the bag of groceries are there for you. He didn't even want to say it loudly because he didn't want to point. But she went to his kitchen and came out with a bag of groceries that she was clearly there to pick up. Um, and the only reason he stopped her from even talking, because at one point he said, you know, he said, please forgive me, sister. I don't want to be rude to my guest. That was me. You know, and so she left. When I was with Imam Muhammad, and this is just another sign of his, what I, I honestly believe he was among the awliya, and, and just one of those that you know, truly had a, a maqam that many people didn't get an opportunity to fully appreciate. But uh, I was sitting with him, and at one point, he said something to me. He said, Rami, my whole life, I've been, because you know, another thing about Imam Muhammad, he was kind of criticized often by not you know, giving the hadith in Arabic and citing in Arabic and, you know, people were saying, you're not talking about the prophetic sunnah enough, you're not, blah, blah, blah. You're not Muslim enough. But one thing he said to me, he said, you know, Rami, my whole life I've been trying to point them to Muhammad. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa That's it. My whole life is an arrow to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And when he said that, it made me think of the same brothers who were attacking him in the name of sunnah, Right? And I had them in my mind. And so I started saying, I started saying something like this. I started saying, Imam, it's just ironic, you know, that people, you know, that who, who quote unquote love the sunnah and the hadith and, you know, have said certain. And he stopped me. He stopped me. And he said, Rami, he says, there's always good in the community of the Prophet Muhammad, right? There is always good. He didn't even let me go there. He didn't let me go there. All he could talk about was the beauty of the Muslims, right? And this is a person who had probably been viciously attacked by Muslims for a good period of his life, right? And that, that was the character of Imam Muhammad, may Allah mercy on him. And, and honestly, we, you know, we owe a lot to that legacy. I always tell the Palestinians, I'm Palestinians, uh, I always say, listen, man, and I go back to my uncle, that one of the stories I started off with. I have an uncle who's, whose name was Muhammad, but he's Mickey now. Right? I can't get him back to Muhammad. And it was ironic that at a moment where in America you had the Mikes, you had the Muhammads, and the Mahers going to the Mikes and the Mickeys, you had the Cassius, and you had the, you know, you had the, 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 the Mikes going to Muhammad and Ali. To the point where it is... Muhammad, right, the idea of this extraordinary name gets elevated to a point in this country where we can call it a bona fide American name because of what they endured. The legacy of those who came underneath Imam Muhammad
came through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they made that name a, they made it honestly a respected prophetic name in America. I mean, you people remember the fight, Muhammad Ali, right? What's my name? What's my name? Some of you may remember, who was it? Was it Sonny Liston? Was it one of the, one of the dudes? What, who was it? Patterson, yeah, where he was extending the fight because Patterson, all up until the time of the fight, was saying, Cassius, you know, call him Cassius, Cassius. And in those, those interviews, he was saying, call me Muhammad, call me Muhammad. He, said, call, he kept calling, he was taunting him publicly, call him Cassius. So when he got in the ring, that was one of the fights that our beloved brother extended a little longer. He could have dropped him probably in the <laughs> second, third round. But I think he kept the fifth, sixth, seventh round just to keep him up, hit him a couple times and say, what's my name? Allah, say my Allah, name. Allah, Allah, say my Allah, name. Allah, Allah. Right? Say my name. Allah. Say Muhammad. Let me hear you say it. Right? That, that, that was powerful, right? Can you imagine the psychology of people seeing a champion elevate the name Muhammad? Allah, right? Allah, Allah. Allah, and that's what, these, that's what this community did. That's what this community did. So for us to come, and, and that was the insult to injury for kind of immigrant community to come and feel, now let me teach you Islam, right?